Yo, what's up guys, Universal Mastery. So, what I do on my channel is I take the occult sciences and I break them down to an extremely practical level so that you can use them and apply them in your day-to-day -day life and get real, actual results. Okay, that's, that's what this whole entire thing is about, is actually getting results. Making sure you're living a better life, making sure you're feeling better, making sure you have more energy, making sure you're understanding where you're at in the process so that you know, you're know you overall more confident about which direction you're headed in and just where you are right now, okay? So what I'm gonna be talking about in today's video is something that, you know, this was, this is, I think this is uh, foundational for when, when you start to get into deeper spiritual works. Um, and I think this is, this is a question that gets asked all the time. And the question is, what is the difference between an angel and a demon? And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try and explain to you what I know about it and the difference that I know. I'm. I'm not gonna say that I know the deepest. You know, I definitely don't know the deepest aspects of like where exactly angels and where exactly demons came from. Um, I don't think there's many people that actually do. I think there's. I think there's a lot of research out there where you, where you can trace a lot of these things back to. Um, but me personally, I haven't done that extremely deep research yet. You know, that's going to come within time right now. I'm focused on other things, but I have a pretty good idea, um, from my own research and, you know, from my own experience of what is the difference between these two things and a little bit of like why, why they're different. Okay. So if you're interested in that, what is the difference between an angel and a demon? Stay tuned. So the first thing I want to say is definitely go and check out the Patreon. Where you're going to find the link for the Patreon is at the very top of the description. And what I have on my Patreon is a little vault of exclusive videos. It's going to be half and half. Okay, so half of the videos are going to be geared towards actually getting your hands and feet wet when it comes to spiritual practices. Okay, I have literal step-by-step -step breakdown videos of essential videos that you need to begin practicing this art. For example, one of the most important things that you need to learn how to do is invocation, spiritual communion, where you're literally calling the spirit into your body um, through a specific sequence of words, through a specific technique. I break that down on video. So that's, you know, that's just an example of one of the videos that I have. And then the other half of the videos are going to be educational entertainment, just like this video that I'm sharing now. So I already have some videos that are on my Patreon, but it's also going to be a weekly thing. So there's going to be weekly content uploaded on my Patreon that is not on my YouTube channel. So if you want to gain access to that, you have to at least be a tier two or up on the Patreon. And in order to be a tier two, it literally costs $9.95 a month, and that's a reoccurring payment. But if you do the math, that's literally less than a dollar a day. And right now, um, for the value that's on my Patreon, that's that's literally cheap as dirt. So there's really no reason why you shouldn't be able to afford that. And just to throw this out there, what what I'm doing right now on my Patreon is I'm talking a lot about the cobble. Um, you could say the Kabbalistic tree of life. I'm taking the tree of life and I'm breaking it down. Okay, I'm breaking it down sphere by sphere. I have videos of why the tree of life is extremely important, and and I and I have videos pretty much explaining why it's the the uh, it's the backbone of the occult in general. So if you're thinking about joining the Patreon, now is definitely a good time because I literally just started breaking down those spheres and this is foundational. So definitely make sure you go and check that out once again. And as you go up in tiers, the benefits go higher. I want to give a special shout out to the top tier members. Where you're going to find their names is below the first link in the description where the Patreon link is right below it in parentheses. That's their names. Special shout out to you guys. Um, other than that, going right into this video. So, I've been noticing that a lot of my videos, my recent videos on YouTube have been extremely long. Um, and you know, it is what it is. I like, you know, it's it's cool. You know, when I, when I when I record videos, I'm not really like, for the most part, as of recently, I, I, I haven't really been gauging the time. I'm just, I just kind of go and I go and I go and I let, you know, I, I speak on things um, until I feel like I'm, I've, I've covered it. So if that's really long, then it's really long. If it's not, it's not either way. 
I think if I go for a long time, for sure, I mean, it's offering a lot of value. So I'm happy about that. Um, but this one specifically, I am going to be gauging the time. I don't, I don't think this is going to be a long video at all because I already know what I want to cover and I don't think it's going to be that long. Um, so let's get right into it. So the difference between an angel and a demon. Okay. So I was, you know, I've been doing some research on this because I, I didn't really fully know. I know that they're different, but I didn't fully understand. Now, some people say that, you know, angels are positive and, ne and demons are negative, but that's not, that's not fully true because, um, demons can have positive attributes too. And they have negative attributes. Angels have the same thing. Like they have positive attributes and they have negative attributes. Um, so from my experience and from what I understand, the angels and demons are different species. So an angel, and it's set from the research I did, it says that angels are light beings, right? They're light beings. They were created from light. Now, in the most in-depth scientific way to break down how exactly they're created from that light, I'm not 100% sure, but I'm going to give you what I think, okay? So take this. Take this as food for thought. Definitely, I encourage you to do your own research on this. This is my this is my perspective. This and it and there there is a chance I may be wrong on this. So I just want you to know. Um, I think I I think I'm definitely hitting on something. I think I'm definitely making a point here with with what I believe from it. But um, I definitely encourage you to do your own research, and I'm sure it can go really in depth. Like there's some angels that are you know, created differently than other angels. But I think for the majority of angels, what I believe, I think that they were created as helpers. I think that there was, and, and this is one thing that I know, um, like when it comes to the spiritual, when it comes to, when you're diving into like heavy spiritual workings, m most spirits, Right, like most entities, deities, spirits, a lot of them were created at some point by some type of physical being. Now, I'm not going to necessarily say that that physical being was a human, right? Like, it, maybe not necessarily us. Okay, I think the human lifespan extends all the way, the farthest back that we can really recall is 15 million years ago, which is an, that's a long time, but in the big scale of things, it's not that long. So there has been other types of physical beings, as we know, like what we would call aliens or, or other types of things out there that also have, have, you could say spiritual connections too. And they're probably extremely aware, you know, extremely aware of, um, you know, the spiritual aspects of life. You know, so I think that angels were created by, I, I think angels were created by humans. I really do. And I think they, once again, I think they were created to be helpers. So once again, as I was saying, like when you get into the spiritual realm, you, you figure out that like pretty much all the spiritual beings were at one point created by a physical being because for a spiritual, for a spirit to exist and become extremely powerful, it's, it needs some form of physical, you could say, it needs some form of physical outlet, some form of physical grounding um, for it to exist stronger on the earth plane. So I know that there, there are some spirits that transcend this limitation that I'm saying, but for the most part, the spirits that we perceive, the spirits that we talk about, and when I say we, I mean as being the humans that we are with our perception, like most of the spirits that we can perceive, most of the spirits that we work with, um, and that range, you know, that ranges from like Sephirothic spirits to Klebothic spirits to Aztec spirits to, uh, no, like all, all, you know, all those spirits, which are, which are huge and have so much significance and are all really profound expressions of that you could say creator source energy right like it's it's that they all play a very important role in your own self-development but i do believe that you know when it comes to angels specifically i think that they were created by humans at some point in time to be helpers to help people um so for example you know you can draw a sigil it's like a thought form. I don't know if you're familiar, but you can, when you create a thought form, 
um, if you feed that thought form enough energy, and you let's say I'm let's say I, I'm in a group of people, right? Let's say I have a group of spiritual spiritually um, awake people. And I tell my group, hey, look, I'm going to create this thought form. And this thought form is going to, you could say, help us achieve our goals. This thought form is going to make sure that we're protected on one end. Not only protected, but it's going to make sure that it, we're going to attract more people like us, like-minded as us, into our group. And that's the re that is the whole purpose of this thought form. So let's say I go and I make this thought form. And, and there is a science to making a thought form. Um, the mind is extremely powerful, but if I have a group with me that's on board with that same understanding and I create this thought form and I have them helping me to create this thought form. So now I draw the sigil of the thought form. I hand the sigil to my friend. I hand another sigil, the same sigil to my other friend. Now we're all meditating on the same thought form. If we do that consistently for long enough, we are going to, we are literally going to make, create a spirit we are going to create a deity right and if that's that's how a lot of these gods be uh were worshipped in different cultures it, a lot of the times you know it was the more ancient gods that have already existed from some point in time whether that was created by human or beyond human you know maybe a different type of creature um and it, it was already a very strong spirit on its own it it it, it got it it became its it, it had its own mind it, it literally i mean it literally became its own intelligence to a certain point when you strengthen a spirit that energy gains its own intelligence just like if you were to create a ro this is the only way that this is like the microcosmic way i can explain this it's like if you create a really advanced robot at some point in time it's going to be able to pro reprogram itself and and gain its own intelligence so when it comes to spirits and when you are dealing with energy, uh, in that sense, it, they, they can gain their own intelligence very quickly. Um, so for, the very, for, for most cultures, there, there was already this intelligence that was out there, extremely powerful intelligence that, had, that literally became a force of nature. So it can literally alter mother nature here on earth. It can like change the wind, it can, it can just cause a lot of, you know, good either good or or you could say bad situations what whatever you know if you're working with the spirit you're working with the energy you're gaining favor from it then it's going to cause good situations if you're fighting against it and you're you know you're disrespecting it then it could cause bad situations it's a force of nature right so for a lot of ancient cultures they tapped into these already existing energies and then they gave it a, they gave it a new name so we have like the same energy that's coming through that's come through to many different cultures but it's being called different names by each culture and that little subtle difference of those cultures and them working with that energy actually gave that spirit itself a different type of aspect a different almost a, it's like um it's like a different paradigm to that spirit it's the same energy it's the same force of nature it has the same properties but now it has a little bit of a different uniqueness to it like a different paradigm um so yeah so that's that so that was a little bit of a tangent but i just want to make it clear to you guys like how 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 you can create a spirit and that's true like i can create a spirit um and that spirit can become extremely real and like literally like affect people affect affect things around me and, and, and to and if I and I get enough people to empower it, it becomes a it could become a force of nature like absolutely so I believe that angels were created f from a I, I would say like some form of a group of humans that had pretty good intentions I think so I think that they had intentions where they wanted to to make a spirit that brought order and and like you could say brings order to chaos um helps people with clear-minded you know clear-minded thinking or even helps people when they feel like they're they, they, they they're at a place in their life where they're they're stuck like something like where you feel like shit and then something comes and shows you a sign that like keep going like i think angels were created as that they're created from light right like they're created to provide help for people now, I'm not saying just because they were created for that intention, that doesn't mean that an angel can't fuck you up, right? <laughs> it's a fact an angel can fuck you up. And it's a fact that angels fuck with people, too. Angels fuck, will fuck with people that have no respect for them. Because, I mean, 
you know, like if you have someone that's walking around like, oh, fuck angels, they're not real. They're, you know, you really believe in that shit? Their purpose is to help people evolve. It's true. An angel's purpose is to help people go down the right track. I believe that's what they're created for. They're created as light beings. What does light mean? Light means bringing order and structure to chaos. Light is clarity. It's understanding. So if they're created for that. So if there's somebody that's full of chaos and they don't know how to control it, they don't know how to handle their own chaos, they don't, and now they're ignorant, and now they're going around telling people, oh, you believe in that shit, you fucking idiot, you're stupid, you shouldn't, like, this is not real, then that angel could very well n not necessarily take offense to it because they don't think like that, but that, it, it would be their duty to stop that person. Do you understand what I'm saying? It would literally be their, their, the reason they were created is to stop that kind of person from spreading that false information. Okay. Because the angels, once again, the angels purpose is to help people on their path. Um, and, uh, and yeah, if there's someone that's walking around trying to do the opposite of that and say, spread lies about them, then it is their literal duty. It is their program. It is their job to stop someone like that. So. You don't want to approach, you know, you, you don't want to be like, you don't want to be that guy or you don't want to be that girl. Um, so that's my thoughts on angels, right? I think they were created by, by some form of human being. Um, and I think they were created for that purpose. And, and it is known that they are light beings. So now let's look at demons. Okay. This is, I'm going to tell you my personal belief about this. Okay. Demons were said to be created from smokeless fire. Interesting, right? Okay. So, what is also known to be said about demons is that one, they're 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 more closely connected to the physical plane, to the earth realm, to you could almost say Malkuth, right? Um, meaning they have a much more malleable ability to maneuver and operate here and now. So if I want someone to be affected a certain way, it would be a lot more effective if I used a demon for that because the demon can literally change their physical body. It can affect their physical body. It can affect their mind right off the bat. Um, it, 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 it can cause a, uh, a, a good example is it can cause a physical situation to hinder that person or it can cause a physical situation to benefit that person, to help that person. I can heal someone's like physical wound probably a lot better with a demon because they're, they're here on the physical plane. There is not, and I want to make this clear, there is not a human being on this earth that is not in in that is not having daily encounters with demons we all like have you, i mean it's it's known in every mythology every religion that we all have our demons and it's not necessarily that like you could say yeah we all have our demons but it's it's said as it's like this burden right it's like this problem the fact this is the truth and and i want to be i want i really want to like try and shift your paradigm here demons exist here this is their realm right so and to to take it a little more a, a little farther back to ancient times it said that demons existed before us and then the fall and then a fall happened i think and this is my own personal this is my own personal understanding and and i don't know if this this probably doesn't go for all of the demons but i think this goes for this can go for a large amount of them but there's been many points in time, and it's a pattern of the universe, where the universe always has some form of reset. And what is known, I mean, if you study Graham Hancock's work, he talks about it. He's like, he's, been, he's 70 years old, one of the most brilliant guys I've ever seen, and he's an archeologist, and he's been studying the fall of man for, for, for his whole life, pretty much. And he said about 12,800 years. Look this guy up, Graham Hancock. You, you can watch a Joe Rogan podcast of him. Intelligent guy. He will change your. He will literally change your life because of what he knows. Um, so he says about 12,800 years ago, there was a comet that had hit Earth, 
And that was what we that was what we get out of all the mythologies when we talk about the flood. Because what it did is it we used to have these massive ice caps. And he can he can prove this from science. He proves this. So check it out. But we used to have these massive ice caps, and this comet had fell. And one of the theories is is that it crashed right into the ice caps, and then it caused all the extra water to go into the ocean. And then there was so much extra water that it it flooded, and it caused like it literally knocked out like what 70% of Earth like just flooded. So it was a massive reset, and that's what we know as the flood. Right, Noah's Ark and all those things. Um, and the thing is, is that that's not the first time that's happened. Okay, that is not the first time that's ever happened. Um, this is a pattern. Okay, the, 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 the world, Earth itself, has been around for about what, what we can recall over 15 million plus years. Somewhere around there. So it's, it's somewhere in that, in that range. Okay, I'm somewhere in that range. It's, 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 it's pretty old, but once again, in a bigger scale, it's not, it's not as old as we, as we like to, you know, it's not as old as we may think from our own perception, but throughout the time that earth has been here, there's been many resets. There's been a good amount of resets from 15 million years ago. So this, so what we can conclude, just like everything else, remember every microcosm has a macrocosm. And every macrocosm has a microcosm. So we can look at the cycles that we see in our solar system and the cycles that we see, you know, now in our day-to-day -day life. And we can also attribute that to understanding that, okay, if when the world resets itself like that, like that's a big thing. Like when a comet fucking hits Earth that's massive, crashes into a whole bunch of ice caps and floods more than half of the Earth, that's huge. But that's also a pattern so that means that must have happened so the last time from right now that was 12 precisely it's it's known to be that happened 12,800 years ago from this day is when that flood started because of that 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 comet hitting um and then you know there's some other information after that after it says that the comet hit you know all this dust you know there was like there was there was dust that had went up into the atmosphere and it, it literally blocked the sun and there was like a almost a form of like just living in darkness for a thousand years after that comet had hit so it was just pure destruction so it caused the flood and then all this dust went into the atmosphere blocks the sun so it's like living on earth in darkness like it's there's barely any sun it's it's just dim it's very dark every single day for a thousand years right that's interesting right but yeah but but taking it back to the point it's like what we can conclude is that this is a pattern. So 12,800 years ago that happened. So how long ago did it happen before that? Like, like at, at, before that time, when was the last time that a comet hit again? And, you know, we also see patterns, how it manifests in sicknesses and diseases. Just like, you know, you know, when you look at the Bible, right? And you see that it talks about certain diseases and, you know, it talks about these things, right? It talks about like diseases spread it spread and you need to use the blood of the lamb and protect yourself. Now these are all metaphors for what so for what um are patterns that are happening right now. We're experiencing coronavirus, we've experienced Zika, uh, we've experienced all kinds of, you know, um I'm trying to think of the other virus, I'm forgetting. It was the, the one that came from swine flu. Like it's a pattern. Wake up. You got to remember, like, are you not seeing it? Like, we have patterns of this. So, when you start to really dissect the pattern, and you start to realize, wait a minute, this, this isn't anything to be afraid of. This isn't anything that you can even stop. There's nothing you can do to prevent this. It's a pattern of life. This is literally the cycle of life. This is the cycle of life. Why, why do we think we could put an end to this? It's, it's how life is. It's, it literally, it's, it's patterns and it's cycles. It needs to do this. Um, so yeah, so taking it back to the, the demon concept, I believe that some demons, I'm not going to say all of them because I would be wrong if I just said that. I believe that some of them died in the falling of man, when, when we had those patterns where the, the, the earth, you could say, reset itself. 
I believe that most of those demons were extremely powerful people. Um, I believe a lot, I, I would say some demons, you know, came from this, this sense of fall of man. I think, I think, I, I, I just get this idea that demons were, were actually physical people that were worth looking up to, that were in, like, very great examples of how to act, how to be, um, very intelligent people, yet, you know, still people, still had their flaws, still, you know, still lacked in certain areas, but were great in others, like, like, legendary people, right, like, people that were the warriors that saved your tribe, the warriors that you knew if they fought by your side, you're gonna win. You knew if this person was on your team, you're going to be 10 steps ahead because this person has knowledge and a personality and a character that is beyond what most people understand. This person was in touch with something. And I do, I think some people, like, like I think it's different. Like for some of the ancient cultures, I, some people, you know, when they passed away, let's say that there was a really just like a profound warrior in your tribe. And this person has been like the, the, the strongest warrior for centuries. And then let's say when that person passes away, that tribe starts to worship that the death of that person, meaning they, they start to empower that person's spirit. And they talk about him. He's now in the stories. He's now in the legends. He's now almost a small god of their tribe. Like they give offerings to him. They're charging his spirit. I think that a demon can get formed that way. I'm, and I'm saying this because I, I totally, I totally think this is true. I totally think a demon can get formed that way. And also, you know, when the fall of man happened, um, you know, when there was those times where those those periods in the cycle of life where everything kind of reset itself, I think we lost, you know, we lost a lot of powerful people there too, right? So I think you know some people. You know, when you when, see, see, this is the thing when you become a strong and a powerful person, you then have a lot more control of what happens in the afterlife. So, if you let's say you lost your life in that way and you you you, you gain more control over you could say the astral plane when you pass to the next plane, you can, you know, when you're in the astral plane, you can affect the physical plane if that's what your will is. If you want to do that, then you can. So let's say that fall of man happened. Now the, the very powerful people that were living during that time that died because of that experience, now they're in the astral plane where there's no past, present, and future. It's all at the same time. So now they can literally travel where they want to go, when they want to go there. They can travel where they want to go, when they want to go there. And you know, it's that could maybe be a demon, right? Like it, it's someone that is that has lived, understands what life is like, has passed away for, you could almost say unfortunate reasons, but you know, at the end of the day, everything happens for a reason. So if you live during that lifetime and you die during that time, then it was supposed to happen anyways. That That is someone that has lived on earth and passed away and now is a spirit that can affect nature, that can affect physical things around you and, and nature around you. And they understand you because they were a part of this human consciousness or they were a part of the consciousness, a, a, a piece of, of the consciousness that that is, I would say earthly. I would say, yeah, I would say, I would say had, had lived uh, on earth at some point because that's, that's another thing that's known to be when it comes to demons is that they are an aspect of your psyche. They are an aspect of your consciousness. And that is, I believe that to be 100% true. And I think, you know, and, and I, I'm throwing out examples of what I think demons could be. And I really do believe this. I, I have a strong resonance for these. And I'm not saying they all came this way. I'm not saying that like all demons were created from the fall, you know, when we had these cycles on earth, it wiped people out and then people died, powerful people, and then they became demons. I'm not saying that's how they all started. Some happen, as I said, with the first example, you know, there's been tribes and powerful people in those tribes. And when they passed away, they gave offerings and they worshiped that person after that's, that's another form of how a demon can, can be created. Um, and then there's this, it, you know, there's so many, there's, there's a lot of variables that can happen, but what we can take is that a demon was an existing person at one point, like it was a person. Um, it was some form of a person you could say in some reality 
maybe, and this is where I have questions, I think, I would think it, it has to be from Earth because they have that connection to the psyche. They have that connection to the mind. And when you come here to Earth, when you, like as everyone, you know, being here right now, we all have like like we all have our own demons as you know as as people like to say um meaning like we're existing here and there is also another type of being that's in the spiritual realm that exists with us and you either spend your entire life trying to resist that and thinking it's evil and pushing it away or you open yourself up and, and get in and, and say hey look can you help me progress on my path? Can you teach me like the things that you know? Can you empower me? Uh, I want to be my best self. And you and you connect. I mean, like, can you imagine that? Like, imagine yourself as a spirit. You're here as a spirit. You're like here on Earth. You cho you chose like I want to I want to be here as a spirit on Earth. Maybe maybe there's not a choice. You know, maybe maybe that comes into the play as well. Maybe there's not a choice. Maybe like when you when you when you when you become a demon. Maybe you don't really have too much of a choice, and maybe that's a specific part in your in your journey where you need to, you know you need to be a demon. It's you know there's a lot of questions that that I'd like to have answers to myself. Um, but you know, imagine your spirit, you're here on Earth. You you realize you can affect things, but the only way that you can really the only thing that makes you feel satisfied is when someone realizes that you you're real like can you imagine like you're sitting around you're sit you're you're in a specific location everyone's like oh and you hear people talking like oh demons are evil and they want to do this to you and you got to run away from them you got to pray to angels to, to to destroy them and things like that can you imagine how pissed that would make you when in reality you're just like yo i want to help you like I'm, I'm here to like help you like 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 tell me what you need like first thing first you need to do is understand that I'm not here to, I'm not evil you first thing you have to do is open yourself up energetically that's the first thing you have to do in order for me to even help you and once you do that you got to realize like I, I can do things for you like I can really go out of my way and set up certain circumstances and situations that are gonna help you live your most empowered life here but I can't do that if you're thinking I'm evil especially if you're telling other people so now I have a choice do I want like if you, are you gonna call me evil you know are you gonna keep calling me evil and you know and, and you think I'm just gonna take that or maybe I'm you know maybe I'm gonna do stuff to you I'm gonna start fucking with you so you shut the fuck up about me being a demon so you realize like whenever you speak about demons in a bad light bad things happen to you so you just shut up and now people now you that that false information is isn't gonna spread and now people that are are smart intelligent open-minded wise understanding those are the people that are going to realize that demons are an aspect of life and that you want to approach it in a very respectful manner because it's just like you would approach someone that you respect like a mentor like i want to learn from you i understand that you you know a lot of things that i don't know and i understand that i have things about me that you want that you, that you essentially want to learn from me essentially or there's things that you want to experience through me maybe that's the better word there's things about me that you want to experience that you can't unless i open myself up to you and i approach you from the mindset of i want you to influence my life in this way i want you to influence my life in the ways that are going to make me a more powerful human being in a way that is aligned with my purpose the reason why i came here and they will do that. That that will give them something that, that is worth their time. And that will give them, you could almost say, that would give them a sense of purpose. That will give a demon a sense of like, cool, like I'm down, like let's like, I'm ready to do that. Um, and that and that builds your respect up with the demon, that builds your connection to the demon. And then it's just like, and then you exist here on earth and you're not running from shit, you're not scared of shit, you're existing amongst beings and creatures in the spiritual planes that are friends to you, that are allies to you, that are brothers and sisters, that become family to you. Like I don't, like the people that teach that you need to be scared of these things are the people that are going to die miserably. They are going to live miserable lives and they are gonna suffer. Because I, can, I, I remember what it was like in my path being afraid of these things and always thinking like, oh, I gotta watch what I do, I gotta set up boundaries. You can't reach the higher planes from that perspective. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap it up here. This video de actually went a lot longer than I thought it would. I think I shared a lot of good information though. And remember, take it as food for thought. 
Um, I think a lot. What I think a lot of what I said definitely has a lot of merit to it, and it's worth investigating. Okay, and I'm you know I'm still diving deeper into this myself. Once again, this is not the the albeit though. I don't think all demons w were created that way. I think a, probably a good portion of them were. Um, and then the same thing with the angels. I don't think all of them were created the same way. I think there's definitely a lot of unique uniqueness between different types of angels. And I think there's even different types of species and subclasses when it comes to these beings as well. That's a fact. Um, so, you know, I'm still doing my own research. I think what I shared is definitely worth it though. I think, I think there's a lot of value you can get from that. Um, so just to wrap the whole thing up, what we can get is that angels are light beings. I think angels were specifically created to be helpers, and I think that they were specifically created by human beings. Then we have demons that were created as a different species, and they're, 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 they're made from smokeless fire. So I believe that these used to be existing beings that passed away and then turn, turned into, you could say, became a demon became was a very powerful person not just a random person a very wise smart powerful um hungry you could say motivated inspirational type of person that passed and went to the next plane and became a small force of nature and once again there's many there's many ways that that could you know that could have taken place but demons definitely have a lot more dominion on the earth plane they can do physical things a lot more effectively they can move things a lot more effectively. They can affect the physical plane a lot more effectively. Angels are more so geared towards the inner planes. So you can you can feel you know angels can provide you a sense of comfort. They can provide you you know certain states of you know positive thinking, certain states of clarity and order, things in that nature. They can make you feel like you know everything's going to be okay and things in that nature. And demons can do the same thing, but. Once again, they're going to be a lot more geared towards if you want to visit, like I want a job promotion, you're probably going to want to work with a demon. If you want to, you know, understand some really, you could say some really tough esoteric understandings about maybe how like energy works or anything in that nature, then an angel could be good for that because angels also, you know, are, are very intelligent beings. Um, and they exist in the higher planes. So you, it depends. Like if you're working with your lower self and you're, you know, if you're working with your lower self and you're you're looking to become a master of the physical plane and, and understand certain levels of your psychology, demons are going to be great for that. If you're working in the higher planes and you have a lot of questions about that, you know, the higher meanings of life and um, you know things in that nature, like what happens after uh, after death and you know how do what is my purpose and how do I how do I get there? Angels can be angels can be very good for that. Um, and then you know so we have angels and demons. That's that's the difference. Light being smokeless fire, um, earthbound or earth savvy, I should say, definitely re reside on the earth plane a lot more, and then angels in the higher planes. Um, but then we have the primordial ancient dark spirits. The, the some people call them the dark gods. They are the they they predate all both angels and demons. Predate them completely. These are the spirits that I work with, and these spirits teach you everything. They can teach you they because because a lot of these angels, a lot of these angels and demons work. You could almost say work under these primordial dark gods, meaning that. If a primordial dark god wants, uh, it could just say, hey, send the, this, the, this group of angels and demons over to him so that he can evolve himself in the way that he needs to evolve. Like, these beings have, like, extreme power. And they can, they can do the whole nine, right? Like, they can, they can take you through the whole up and down. Um, you know, you want to learn about your psychology? Cool, I have a group of demons that's going to be great for you. Oh, you want to learn about the higher plans of life? I'll teach you that myself. Or I got some angels that'll help influence you. Depends. Um, so yeah, so that's that's definitely what I know about it. Um, and yeah, that's gonna wrap this video up. I, I definitely am gonna make a video on the dark gods um, coming soon because I think that's what I just did. I think I just opened that 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 can of worms. So yeah, I'll leave it there. Definitely hit a thumbs up, hit, hit the like button if you thought this video offered you value. Go to the subscribe button, hit the notification bell because I post videos as often as I can. 
And remember, in order to find the Patreon, it's going to be the first link at the very top of the description. So definitely go and check that out. Go to the second link below. Check out the Streamlabs merch. You can literally place an order for a Hecate sigil shirt. Um, and when you place the order, they will literally ship it right to your door. Um, then you go to the third link below. That's going to take you to the Facebook community. When you get there, you're going to see a pin post. Uh, that says private group you're gonna click it and then you can request to join and I'll add you in I'm gonna be posting a little bit of extra content on there in the form of quotes So other than that wrapping it up. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day or night wherever you are And I will see you on the next video. Peace